Uh, today in the shop, we had to deal with some pretty bad weather. It snowed most of the day. We did manage to get everything cleaned up outside, but it ate up a big part of the day. And we wanted to finish up some of the few remaining parts of our rear wheel project. The We got the alternate carrier, the one that has the 630 sprocket. We took care of that. We got it taken apart, polished, cleaned up, ready for the new sprocket that's coming from Vlad. And I showed how I went about taking it apart, polishing it, cleaning it up, the total restoration. And it's, I didn't get time to do the hardware today. It was on the agenda for today, but because of the snow, we just ran out of time as we do from time to time. Now here's a real surprise. We wake up this morning. When I went to bed, they said a little chance of snow tomorrow, maybe some overnight, a little snow. Ah, not much snow. Yeah, well, we got enough that I got to use the snow blower. Ah. Instead of having a nice, warm, toasty day in the house, I got an hour or two hours out here in the yard chopping ice and that. But there's always good news. The good news is, wonderful good news, that all of the parts I need to work on today are already in the cellar. Joe's fairings drying up by the heating vent. Wheel, one extra day of dry time. So today we're going to polish some parts and probably tomorrow get the tire put on the wheel. Wow. But right now I got to do what I have to do every day it seems like. Clean out the yard, do the walkway. What a pain. What a, this whole winter. But I'm very thankful that we don't have it as bad as our friends in Texas. Keeping a hole in that ice all through the winter, an ongoing job. And I see it just started snowing some more. You just can't win. It's supposed to snow all day, in fact. And just when we could start to see the Volkswagen and we could <laughs> see our neighbor's house, <laughs> more snow coming. Wow, this, what, a, what a winter this has been. Holy mackerel. And if you live in a warm weather climate, you just don't know the joy of getting up in the morning and, <laughs> and having that snow blower going. Look at this. Uh, it just couldn't be more fun. I'm telling you, what a day. More stuff. to put that 27 year old snowblower away and get inside and have some coffee. Wow, I don't know how much more energy I have today. This, as I get older, this is getting harder and harder. I, <laughs> and the snow today is like a rock, unbelievable. So Karen just yelled out to me here as I'm cleaning up. <laughs> it's gonna snow all day and into the night. <laughs> Lucky me. Lucky I got all my stuff inside though. Now how appropriate is this? Karen puts out this wreath with uh, <laughs> Dallas the snowman up there. Holy mackerel. He must be laughing at me today. I dug out the painting table just in case the uh, kangaroo decal delivery comes in for Joe. But I think it's safe to say the next couple days we will not be doing a lot of painting. We'll be polishing today. I don't know if in warm weather climates that coffee tastes the same. Oh boy. And it's really coming down now even more. Unbelievable. It's funny. I'm having my coffee and this is what I get. While I'm out shoveling snow, they're out. <laughs> I think I should have gone with them. That, instead of shoveling. There it goes. Whoa! Okay, so why am I here? I'm not out at the, the ski slope. That was. So I come in. I'm out there shoveling. <laughs> for over an hour and I got my coffee ready and I got pictures that I'm out at the there's a mountain here close where they all go on the sleds very funny I gotta have my coffee I'm shot now after a wonderful cup of coffee that you can't believe how it tastes I just couldn't resist running down here and checking out Joe's parts now these have these have dried at this is the third day second day third day 
Boy, they've dried up beautifully. Oh my God. And that color match, the thing that we were afraid of, it wouldn't be, it, Joe, Karen couldn't remember where, she could not find where one part ended and where the touch up began. So I know Dallas because Dallas is ready to work on his wheel. Maybe this will give him some food for thought, something he'd like to do. Now I can't wait, see, this is why I love coming down to shop in the morning, seeing all the projects on the way. And the fact that we got this cleaned up yesterday, and when this is going to go up against a black wheel, wow, I just think that's going to be really nice. I'm, I'm a little bit excited about that. Anyway, we do have parts today to paint or polish. I don't know if I'm going to paint or polish. I'm going to take, I'm going to disassemble this, thoroughly clean it, and decide whether that, this is aluminum, of course, and polishing aluminum, a whole lot different than polishing steel, which is what we did yesterday. Now, the downside of polishing this is going to be I don't know, once it's taken apart, if this part is going to... It's a casting. It looks like a smooth casting. It looks like there's a machine surface. If there is, that'll make our job a little bit easier. But needless to say, we got to take it all apart first. Now, before I go any further, what I wanted to, to explain to some people that may not, may not understand this, this bike comes with a 630 chain. It's a big, giant, heavy-duty chain stock. I've had the bike... I bought a conversion kit and converted it to 530. Saves a bunch of pounds, a bunch of weight, and plus it's a lot easier to replace the chain. There's, there are better quality chains available and then the 630s, I think, but I'm not sure. And that was years ago. And since then, I've replaced the 530 chain several times. I've even had one bad chain. So what I want to do is while I have this, you can see it's pretty well beat up and pretty well, uh, well, it's dirty if nothing else. And there's a sealed bearing up here, or a seal anyway. Yeah, it's a sealed bearing. All right, so the first thing, of course, is before I even try to clean it, is pull the sprocket off. These, they have these little tangs that I have to beat off and then get the right wrenches out. And once this is disassembled, I'm going to block this off with Gorilla Tape when I, when I do the polishing, because I don't want any polishing compound. Anytime you have even a sealed bearing, you don't want any dirt and junk to get down in there. So. It's, it's a little bit involved, but it looks like it's an aluminum thing with a, it looks like maybe this guy that had the bike before me even put some silver paint on it or something. I don't know. It, this is what makes working on old bikes fun. You take them apart and all of a sudden there's a dead mouse inside or something. You never know. Step one on this disassembly here is to get these tangs out of the way. Kind of self-explanatory why you have to. Now, of course, this is a good thing to have. It's it's not something that uh, you want to take lightly. I have taken in the past and put an aircraft lock nuts on this, but I don't think I have any more. I think this is the end of the aircraft lock nuts, so I better save these just in case. Once you have those tangs bent down, well, there you go. Now you can. I can just go get a wrench and get off the nuts and it'll release the sprocket. Now one of the reasons these are real good, and, and they're a good safety thing in fact I think, and I, I'll, I may not even put lock nuts on here, I'll put these pieces back, I gotta decide yet. The, here's the whole reason is, they don't want you over tightening these bolts and stripping them. Now I, I'm sure they, they're Loctited, but on the other hand, uh, they're not super Loctited anyway. Not like the uh, modern bikes that have the floating calipers and they're all red Loctited in. And it makes you crazy to try to get them out. So, uh, you know, of course, we'll save all of the little parts. We can repolish them. I have a whole bag with all the hardware in there. And that'll be, that should be a pretty straightforward thing when we get. So the way this comes apart, it's pretty well engineered, is these bolts can't turn. They're locked in. These nuts can't really loosen up when you have this little piece on, so I think that's a pretty good little thing of engineering. I think that's all the bikes of that era have a very similar thing. Now, if you really were a super custom guy, you could reverse these, and I'm sure there's a way you could get the nuts inside and tighten. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't want to get too cute on this, anything on this, because one of the things this bike we use for long rides. I don't want to be on a long ride 100 miles from home and boink, something loosens up. Never had this apart before because this, these are parts of the spare bike that I bought in Philadelphia 
But I've noticed, now when I bought the bike from the gentleman that I bought it from, I was with Ray Straub at the time we went down and picked up the bike with his van, uh, he had given me a free extra chain and sprockets and I gave them to Luciano because Luciano had a 630 chain on his big Kawasaki. I think he used the chain, but I don't have the chain anymore. But I have a spare sprocket and this looks like, this is not a stock sprocket, this is a 41 tooth. And it's a a son, a son. This, a son. this is a. Uh, I'm I'm sure this is not stock, or it would say Suzuki on that. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? But anyway, Joe may want to have a spare sprocket. I don't know. Joe and Aaron both have GSs, and maybe they, you know, they can use a spare sprocket. But I don't have any use for a a 630 anything anymore, because I've got the bike converted over. And this is why I take stuff that's uh, old stuff apart, right down to the studs if possible. We can, we can clean this all up, get rid of all the oxidation. This, I'll clean this up and just put it in storage and see if Joe or Aaron or, uh, what, I, don't, I think Dallas already has his GS converted over, so he won't need that. But if anybody does need that, I'll be glad to donate it to the, uh, the, the A-Team. Now this, of course, next step is to block off this bearing and we'll put the hardware aside for now. Block off, clean this up, just basic cleanup with some brake part cleaner so I can get some Gorilla Tape to stick. Maybe stick a rag down in there, I don't know. Yeah, that bearing is still exposed and I put a rag or something there. And then I can clean this up now. The, the purpose is I want to clean everything before I go grind it, sand it, polish it, whatever. I don't want, to, I don't want anything to get in that bearing. Now all of these parts will get thoroughly degreased and cleaned and polished as necessary, but right now I'm putting this aside. I'll just do a basic cleanup on that because this is the part I want to work on first. Now I know this is funny. You'll get a kick out of this. Here's, here's another 630 sprocket. And that's the original one off, off of the bike when I converted it. I polished it up and made wall art out of it for my bathroom. See, this, is, this has been my bathroom. There's discs. Who, you know, who needs works of art where, uh, <laughs> when you can have polished sprockets for artwork? Look at that. So here's the plan. While I'm working on other stuff, I can just let the Simple Green sit on this without doing a lot of heavy labor. I can put this aside. That'll clean this up. And then if somebody does need this for their bike, if you have a 630 bike. And I've got Luciano, I gave him that chain and I couldn't believe how heavy it was until I took it off the bike. The first time I, I compared the 630 to the 530, but I know the reality was back in the day they didn't have the chain, the seal chain technology they have now. I, so these bikes that have been converted to 530, I'm sure are fine. And I just don't like to put parts away that are filthy dirty. I think a couple minutes of cleanup. Then when I look at my cabinet, I see all my spare parts. I feel like I'm at a, uh, I don't feel like I'm at a junkyard, even though it is a junkyard. <laughs> Anyway, if somebody does need this part or would like to have it, it's yours for the taking. And we'll put this in inventory now, but it's at least half clean and we can make a donation for people that are still using 630 chains. First thing on this is to clean this surface because I need to put a piece of Gorilla Tape on this. And I don't, I guess a little brake port cleaner on a rag. I don't want to have the, this come apart. I don't want anything to get down into that bearing. So sealing this up with Gorilla Tape will be step one. And then I guess what I can do, looking in here, this is full of grease. So I can just stuff a rag in there or stuff some paper towels in it, that'll seal that up. And it's a pretty well engineered part, no doubt about that. But I wanna protect that bearing, even though it's a sealed bearing. So I can just trim this off, make sure that's good. The Gorilla Tape worked great on the wheel. That'll seal the sealed bearing. You don't see that edge anyway. Now I can take some clean paper towels and just stuff them down in here. That'll keep that half clean. It's really important to do this too. I, I don't want that bearing and I don't wanna to have to replace it, that's for sure. And this will just be, we'll be ready to start cleaning. Now, a lot of people don't realize, or they, they underestimate the amount of time they need to clean parts if you're going to do a restoration. Now, if you're going to restore this part, 
and you don't take it apart. You just try, I don't know what you would do, but again, I always believe it's better to pay the price right up front. Clean the, clean the part up. You can't do much with it until you clean it. Just ordinary simple green, let it sit for a few minutes. An ordinary scrubbing brush, you can still use the same simple green over and over, just keep dipping into it. But once we get this loosened up, we'll be ready to see what, what technique we're going to use. Now, obviously this is an aluminum part, so whatever we do in terms, if we decide to polish it, which I think what I'm going to do, I'm still thinking about it, but the aluminum will be a lot easier to polish than that job we did yesterday. That was a bear. Polishing stainless steel is just a lot of a lot more work. So loosening up all the grime on this, it's really not, as long as I have it apart, a minute here, a minute there, and this will be like, I hopefully, a, a brand new part to go with our wheel. And when we see the, a brand new sprocket on a polished carrier. Got a little compressed there just to clean up a little bit more of it. There's obviously stuff inside here that we're not going to spend all day doing, but I do want to have that side clean. Now this is a soft wire brush that will allow me to get some of the goop out of the inside of that carrier. Now in fast forward you can see how quick that took all the residual grease and everything else out of there. Cleaned up the whole inside of the part very quickly. Now the reason I always think it's worth cleaning these parts up and restoring them to as good or better than new condition is because if you buy these parts off eBay, they usually work in worse condition than what you already have. Now I want to do the same thing over here. I want to clean this up, but I don't want to scratch this surface. I want to see what surface is underneath there. I might be able to polish that with just maybe sanding with some 2000 grit or something and make that that I don't have to spend a lot of time at the wheel taking scratches out. I don't know. But even doing this part, I know what you're thinking. And I'll repeat my famous saying, the gods see everywhere. Nobody's ever going to see this, except if you're watching this video, but, but I'll know it's there. Every time I get on the gas, I'll be thinking, ah, the gods are smiling upon me. Maybe they're not, I don't know. Now, in fast forward again, the, the small bench grinder has a soft brass wheel, and I'm using it not on that surface I want to polish, but just to get all the area where the sprocket actually attaches clean. Now the next part of this is not going to be an easy decision. This is a, for sure a casting, which means it's got a rough surface. If I run a wire brush over it, it's not going to come out perfectly smooth. It's going to have wire brush scratches. So instead of running wire brush scratches, I'm going to try to sand a piece of that, maybe even with some steel wool. Uh, I'll try that. I've got to do a couple of experiments and see what grade of sandpaper is going to do that, because the sandpaper leaves less scratches and it'll be less time I have to spend over at the buffing wheel to get that to be the way I want it. So what I did just to see what I'm dealing with here, I took a piece of 1200 sandpaper and I, needless to say, here's the test. If the water gets black right away, this doesn't have plating on it or the plating is worn out. So it's basically aluminum. It's a casting, so it's going to be rough. So if I were to go over to the polishing wheel, what's going to happen, and it's going to be pretty obvious to everybody, I'll be at the polishing wheel for three hours polishing this up, and it'll always have that little waviness. If I sand it flat with too rough of a grit, it'll have scratches, and I'll be over at the wheel forever too. So what I need to do is figure out what grit, now 1200 looks a little bit on the soft side. So before I can get rid of the mountain tops on the casting, to polish it up. Now, it, you may think, well, gee, that's kind of self-explanatory, and you know what it is. But it's amazing how many people think you can just take a casting. And a good example is the GS, the side covers of the engine. You can just sit and polish them till, it, till your face is blue. It'll still look like a casting. Well, I don't know if I can show this on a macro lens here. Let me just see. That gets some of it out, but I need to go to a little bit rougher grit because I can still see 
I've got mountaintops and valleys. So from 1200, I think I'll try 600. Now 600 usually leaves scratches in the aluminum. <laughs> so uh, may, uh, I'm just going to have to see. But this, this now, if I spend, uh, let's say I spend a half hour doing this with sandpaper, I'll save an hour of being over at the wheel trying to polish mountaintops off with the, with the compound and the wheel. Now, if you had a tool, you could use a, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not sure. You could, you, you could use some kind of sanding tool that had a curve in it. It's just easy enough to do it by hand. It's a small enough part, but I want to see what this is going to look like when I do some 600 sandpaper. I'll do it real quick and show it up here. Let's see. Get a paper towel. Yes, the, the, six, the 600 looks like it's taking the mountaintops down a lot quicker. Uh, and obviously it is and not leaving those awful scratches so the, the trick is going to be sand the whole part with 600 and then we'll go over to the wheel i stumbled upon a handy little thing a, a tube of viafreeze which we have plenty of in the shop by the way just gets right into that crevice and makes getting that it's a lot easier than pushing your fingertip down in there when we get to do this and it looks like 600 sandpaper is going to be the way to do this i'm just going to tough this out because i don't want to have the second best finish I can have. This is going to go up against a black wheel that's very shiny. I don't want it to look like chrome. I want it to look like very highly polished aluminum. And there's a big difference in my book. Some people say no, they can't tell the difference. Well, I can. And some people can't tell the difference between a, a hamburger and gavilta fish. So, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm one of them. Anyway, this, this turned out to be a great little tool. And this is just going to be time consuming. But when we're done... This will be ready for the buffing wheel. This will get most of it out. And when you see that coming out black like that, you know you've, you're grinding the tops of mountains of the aluminum casting away. So everything we do up to this point is designed with one idea in mind, that we minimize the amount of time we're at the buffing wheel. Working at the buffing wheel is hard work. It's, it is really tiring. You're using your arm strength all the time. And you're breathing in a lot of the dust, which uh, if I wasn't shooting video, I'd wear a mask. Now this drill press buffing ball is just about the right shape to get down into that, into that angle there. So we'll do some final buffing with that. And the part's really coming out nice. And that little polishing pad actually worked really good. You see it fast forward here, but it worked pretty, pretty good. Now that just worked out just about as good as I could have ever expected. And we are ready. That's one more part of the bike ready to put on that wheel. Even the back is clean. We are ready. This worked out to be good, but unfortunately, there's still snow to shovel. I'm not sure this day could have gone any better because now we'd be able to get a little look at how that's going to look up against the, the polished black. We got the disc ready. And between both of these pizza pies, <laughs> be happy. I'm glad this is all done. We used up a snowy day, a day that was just, I don't know what else you could have done today. So the wheel is cooking. Joe's parts are cooking. We're, we are really on track to finish out this winter and be ready for spring when it gets here. I'm ready right now, in fact. So I want to thank the healthcare workers. Thank you guys so much for taking care of my family maybe your family too. And I, I don't know how to repay you. I have a sign on my front lawn that's buried in snow right now. And I hope every time you drive by, you know, I really appreciate it. So I hope you did enjoy the video and maybe you're out painting some wheels and who knows? It's, you never know. It's, it's an unpredictable world. And thank you so much for watching. Now we do try to post up something new every day. We do try to work on motorcycles or related projects almost every day. Some days we go ice skating. And <laughs> today is not one of them though. Anyway, I like to look back at the end of a day. I like to look at how this project started, the original wheel. And when we still had the tire installed, one of the lessons we learned from this project, how important it was while cleaning the wheel and disassembling it to leave the tire on. That seemed to be a good tip worth passing on. 
And I really used it to my advantage during the steam cleaning and all of the cleaning and disassembly of the original wheel. Now, as I, as I look back, and I look back on all of my projects this way, every one of the projects that I've worked on, all these restorations, they start out being, oh, a labor of love. They're dirty. They're filthy. They're grindy. They're, you, you think when you start the motor, they're never going to end. You're never going to finish it. And how long is it going to take? And I... But somewhere in the middle of the job, you start thinking, oh, hey, that's starting to look good there. And here, as we get the wheel in primer and we hit a couple of nice days, during the painting, we hit some exceptional days. I, so looking back at this wheel project, and of course, we still have to do the front wheel. And as I was doing this, Joe's fairing in prime. <laughs> I, there's memories within memories of this project. Now, because we're doing two projects at the same time, I can still see all of the, the, the things that remind me of painting the red, the orange stripe, matching the paint, uh, thinking about how wide I wanted to make the stripe and redoing it in my mind over and over again. Because it's the vision of seeing this and the hard part of it all, the hardest part of all, I think, is when you have to see it in your mind and then you have to think of what the steps are. It's like, I always say, it's like building a house. Before the, before you build a house, you've got to see the house. Now, I, in my mind, I got to see what I thought these wheels were going to look like. I closed my eyes. John Pothier, and thank you, John, made like a, uh, a fake rendition of a, a photo. We put on the wheels with the stripe and everything. And I really thought, well, I thought about it over and over and over again. Now, another thing about this job, and I don't know if anybody's really noticed this, I have I have not lost one day of the GS. I have all of these parts are going to be spare parts that in the course of one day, one morning, one afternoon, I'll be able to, when the both wheels are done, the sprocket, the carrier, the new sprocket, I'll be able to go out to the garage and evil twin it out in one day. And then have all of the old the old wheels and all the parts that are on the bike right now but I really haven't had the bike taken apart yet I think that's a that's a nice little addition I wouldn't lose one day if even if you could ride now in the middle of the winter like this it was exceptional that we hit these days that I got the clear painted this this was a very unexpected and I took advantage of every one of them even painting Joe's parts Every one of the days that we had, I had the parts prepped up and ready to go. And when that weather broke, I think we took advantage of every one of them. I mean, that, that was amazing to me. I did not think that was going to happen. That was a free bonus. And now that we're doing the hardware, the last couple of steps on this before we actually put the tire and the curvy girl on, it's a joy to work on it. And then once this is done, we're going to start the front wheel. So I hope you did enjoy the video. This has been a great adventure. It's not over yet. And thank you guys one and all. Thank you so much for watching.